recreation on the Great Lakes doesn't stop when winter comes. But what happens when winter doesn't bring the cold temperatures we expect? Depending on where you are, that can have a big effect on activities like ice fishing. Partner station TVO brings us the story. Part of it is the excitement of reeling in a fish, um, catching a, you know, a big one, you know, your heart gets racing as soon as you get that little bite and you want to reel it in, that's like that, that adrenaline. On Manitoulin Island in Upper Lake Huron, ice fishing has a long and rich history. The island has 108 freshwater lakes, and the water is home to some of the most popular species to catch, including rainbow trout and lake trout. For the past 12 years, the Wikwemakon First Nation, situated on the northeastern part of Manitoulin, has hosted an ice fishing derby on the island. This year, the weekend-long competition spanned over two bodies of water, Lake Manitou and Manitouaning Bay. What we were trying to do was kind of uh, trying to find tourism within the shoulder season because obviously Manitoulin is uh, beautiful during the summertime but not too many people come in the winter. So that's what we wanted to try to attract. The tournament provides a big economic boost to the area. This year marked the biggest turnout to date. More than 700 anglers descended on Manitoulin Island for the competition, 400 of whom were visiting from out of town. We have a lot of people from northeastern Ontario um, Sudbury, Sault Ste. Marie along that Highway 17 corridor. But now we're starting to notice that people are coming in from uh, the states too, Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, and as far east as Quebec. Um, so they're coming here, uh, they want to come and fish the pristine hard water of Manitoulin Island. The red stamp, that means you're fishing Manitouaning Bay. Yep. They will only weigh in Anglers start their day bright and early. Yeah. Yeah. Checking in and making their way on the ice to one of the 300 pre-drilled holes. Once they have their rod out and their reel in the water, it's just a matter of time. But with $50,000 in cash and prizes, this derby is worth the wait. If they catch a fish, uh, their objective is to keep it alive and bring it to the closest weigh-in station. 3.2. You know, you might not catch nothing uh, for a whole day, but at least you know, you're out there with your friends and telling, you know, jokes and stories. And, you know, it's just that camarad camaraderie of, um, you know, being with family and friends. Even though both lakes had completely frozen over, building up more than a foot of ice, the temperature this year was notably warmer. Over the 12 years, it's hard to pinpoint the exact uh, depth of the ice. It fluctuates every year. Um, obviously, we can uh, notice the, the changes uh, due to climate change, right? Some, some years are warmer, some years are way colder. Uh, one year, it could be minus 40. Another year, like this year, uh, it could go up to 2 degrees. The ice fishing season in the province can range from several months in the northern regions to just a few weeks in southwestern Ontario. For anglers in Mitchell's Bay, the season is literally a wash. Located on the eastern shore of Lake Sinclair, Mitchell's Bay has a population of 200 and was once home to television host and fishing icon Red Fisher, whose fishing program, The Red Fisher Show, aired in Canada for more than two decades. I'm Red Fisher here, and this is Scuttlebutt Lodge, the tall tale capital of the world. Mitchell's you Bay is a one-road village, um, a dead-end road that ends at the lake. And the lake is what brings people to our community. It's what drew Jim Williams and his family to the area. He grew up in nearby Chatham, Kent, and has fond memories of Mitchell's Bay as a child. My parents had a wooden shanty that they would park the first week of January out in the bay, uh, we would snowmobile to it on the weekends. And there was a pot belly wood stove in the shanty. And uh, my mom would make chili at home and we would snowmobile as children to the shanty. Uh, my dad would cut holes in the ice for fishing. We would stay inside the shanty and eat chili. Uh, it's kind of a comfort memory of mine, of my childhood. In 1996, his father would go on to buy the local restaurant in Mitchell's Bay. Jim would eventually take over and now runs it with his wife and four kids. Parkside. Business has been good, particularly in the summer, but during the winter, it's been anyone's guess. It's been a mild winter. Um, we have had some snowfall. Um, the old cliche, the only consistent thing about our weather has been inconsistency. It's recommended that ice cover be a minimum of four inches for walking on. That has not been the case for a majority of the season on Lake Sinclair. Uh, this lake offers opportunities unlike any of the bigger Great Lakes. Not that we're a Great Lake, but because it's shallow and because it's small. Yeah, that's a nice one. 
In the winter, these waters are swarming with yellow perch. 2014 was a really good year for us as far as ice conditions. 2017 was another good year as far as ice conditions, so the lake froze completely over and probably average thickness was 24 inches or two feet. So on a Saturday or Sunday, I could estimate that there'd be 500 vehicles here in the bay where both parking lots at the end of the road were full. Along with the restaurant, Jim rents out these cabins. During a good winter, he's booked solid. I look back and I didn't realize that we, you know, had rented that many cabins or that many rooms uh, in those years in good conditions. Um, and this year, virtually nothing. And if you look west on a clear day, you can see the skyline of Detroit. With its proximity uh, to the U.S., Mitchell's Bay has historically been a hot spot for American anglers. We're so close to the U.S. It's a, it's literally a half an hour boat ride. But to according Detroit, to Jim, they are no longer coming, and it's and a direct result of inconsistent ice conditions. So what's happened in the, the time from 1996-97 to present is the avid fisherman, the avid ice angler, um, because of the inconsistency of ice conditions here, has sought out other destinations, um, Lake Simcoe, Lake Nipissing, places where they know from on a year-to-year -year basis that they'll have reliable ice conditions. It's not just bad for the ecosystem, it's really bad for the economy in a winter like this. Gail Kranzenberg is an engineering and public policy professor at Hamilton's McMaster University. She's worked for the province's Ministry of Environment and was the director of the Great Lakes Regional Office of the International Joint Commission. What we don't often think about is the recreational attributes of the Great Lakes in the winter and the small villages and towns that have built a reputation on snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, uh, ice fish on the lakes, and it's a huge draw to the small communities that have that ability to have a small embayment and have the ice there. In 2014, I think we had almost 90% ice cover across all of the Great Lakes, and now in some areas it's ice-free, in some areas it's a few percent. As of early March, less than 9% of the Great Lakes were covered in ice. The globe is warming, so we will warm. But a changing climate means more extreme events in our region. We may have more extreme cold winters, extremely warm winters. For Jim's business, this winter represents thousands of dollars in lost revenue. He's hopeful the season can be salvaged. We have no reason to believe that we will go back to the way it was 30 years ago. So I don't know that my children will ever experience what I did. We have to adapt to the changes that have happened and move forward with it. And if we can go out for two hours and enjoy the pop-up shanty and a little bit of fishing and then come in, at least we're still able to enjoy that experience. As long as I can expose my kids to that opportunity, then I think that that's a positive thing. At Great Lakes Now, we aim to cover the Great Lakes region and the people who live here, like you. Please follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and sign up for our newsletter at greatlakesnow.org.